Well, today is the day for which the A6 machine from Craigslist gets its spotlight for, I guess, gaming? Even though it's really not a strong suit? Well, I did it anyway because, well, that's just the kind of nerd that I am. So, let's talk about that. Well, before I get into it, this is not sponsored, I'd like to give a big thanks and shout out to uh, Mountain Dew for keeping me hydrated when doing these videos. So... The AMD A6-3670K was the real reason why I ended up getting this machine from Craigslist. It's a socket FM1 processor that came out during the early 2010s, I think around 2011 specifically, and it's really an interesting CPU-GPU kind of combination, you know, the APU side of things. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the A6-3670K joins other APUs of the time period, including the, I believe it's the A83870K. Don't quote me on that. Those APUs, I believe, are the first generation of AMD's own kind of APU style of processor, combining a CPU with a fairly decent-ish graphics uh, subsystem on one package. And I honestly was surprised that this machine, as it sat, was actually able to play games. Now, granted, it only had four gigabytes of RAM when I got it, which is an extreme limiting factor, which obviously you have to keep that in mind. But even still, it could do a decent number of games that I had in my library. Now, it obviously doesn't do AAA titles anymore. That needs, like, way more RAM. But it was able to launch some of the smaller titles that I normally use for benchmarking older or slower components, which is largely what I used for this video. So I know repetitive content, but, you know, this is an older system, so you'll have to bear with me. But I also got curious. While the integrated graphics are decent for what this chip was able to do, I wanted to see if I could push more out of the CPU side of things. So I actually overclocked it using the stock cooler. I gave this machine double the memory for potentially, you know, future experimental attempts with future games, potentially some AAA titles, we'll have to see. And I also wanted to see if the CPU could hold up regarding higher resolutions, frame rates, graphical settings, and even some bigger games. So, I also decided to toss in a Radeon RX 560 4GB graphics card into this machine, because largely the CPU is still going to be the bottleneck, so I think a 560 is a fair enough pairing with this old A6. And I know it could probably put in beggar graphics to potentially make the machine a little bit more capable, but again, that'll come later. Now, I used Windows for today's testing because I felt that obviously all the games are going to run the best on Windows, particularly with the integrated graphics. But maybe in the future, this could be a segue to testing games using Linux. We'll have to see because uh, I've not actually done that in a little while, but I digress anyways. Also, before we dive into the results, we'll hear the specifications on the screen for those who are actually curious about what I was using for the tests beforehand and for the tests after I did the upgrades and overclock and that sort of thing. But also, let me know in the future if you'd like me to test some more demanding games. I have recently gotten a uh, copy of Red Dead Redemption 2, and I'd be more than happy to try that. Could also do Grand Theft Auto 5 because that's still a popular game for what it's worth. And there's some other games that I would potentially try with this system, if y'all want to see how the A6 will also still hold up. Obviously, I'm not going to downgrade the specs once again because the newer titles are going to require the graphics card and more RAM. But, you know, I could see if doing the overclock actually makes a noticeable difference regarding CPU bottlenecking performance or whatever the case might possibly be. So let me know what you all would think down below. Anyways, let's jump into the results. So let's start with the easy to run titles for the APU specifically, starting with 2013 Tomb Raider. At 720p low, the APU managed to get a 51.2 frames per second average with a near 40 frames per second 1% low, which is honestly pretty respectable for the APU that we're working with here. Although the upgraded setup is definitely nearly a threefold increase better at low settings with the same resolution, it doesn't really translate to how well this thing will actually perform. I actually retested the benchmarking with 1080p resolution and the ultra in-game preset and just using the special screen effects option, not motion blur, and I was able to capture 73 frames per second on average. So definitely this is very capable at playing this game. But this is an older AAA title, not really indicative of what this thing is actually capable of. Well, that's pretty much the intent of this whole video. So let's move on to another easy to run title. 
The next title we tested was Left 4 Dead 2, one of which actually showed the CPU's weakness in a way, with not being able to obtain high frame rates, or at least not for long periods of time. The APU managed to score an average of 76.2 frames per second, with a near 40 frames per second 1% low once again. This was tested at 1600 by 900 with medium settings and high textures, and for the upgraded setup I decided to push it a little bit, as you can tell from the screen recording quality being a little bit higher than you would expect for the settings used on the APU. I pretty much pushed all the settings to as high as they would go, except for the anti-aliasing, and the same resolution, and that managed 109.2 frames per second on average, which, yeah, it's better, but it's not to the same kind of level that the RX 560 can do with this title, and you can definitely tell from the high CPU usage that, yes, the GPU was at some points being fully utilized, despite MSI Afterburner not really doing a good job of showing that. Yeah, the CPU is definitely being held to basically its absolute limit here, and that's including the overclock that I did. I imagine if you did a stronger overclock, it might be better, but to what extent, I have no idea. So... That's Left 4 Dead 2. I mean, again, an older game, but one that would actually run on this APU just to actually show that, yes, it can play some things. The last title I intentionally picked for the sake of having ease of runnability on the APU was Portal 2. And at 1600 by 900 resolution with the in-game settings at their maximum, once again, with no anti-aliasing, the APU managed nearly 62 frames per second on average with a 38 frames per second 1% low. So not bad, but again, in some areas, you can tell the CPU hitting its limits and causing some stutter with the 14.7 frames per second, 0.1% low. With the upgraded setup, it was easy to get well over 200 frames per second and the same resolution, same settings, and everything. And yeah, there's definitely some instances, again, where the CPU held back the graphics with that 0.1% low being indicative of where the stutter could take place. But honestly, you didn't really experience it all that much. And a lot of the time, the game was well over 144 frames per second, again, with all the maximum settings. But of course, we already knew that because Portal 2 is already an easy enough game to run for the APU as it was, so the upgraded setup just only flexes on top of the APU, which that's not really a flex because most modern PCs run Portal 2 with no issues anyway. So moving on. And now it's time for the Jordan Woolery Obligatory Golf With Your Friends segment break brought to you by the AMD A6 3670K computer. Okay, I'm just joking with that intro. Yes, it's Golf With Your Friends time at 720p resolution with the low in-game preset, which is generally what I use for these older things anyways because I want to try to maximize frame rate, not necessarily the quality, although generally speaking, whenever you're playing online, it's just best practice to keep uh, V-Sync turned on unless you have a high refresh rate monitor just to keep consistency and you know CPU usage down because this game can use CPU quite a bit especially in this case the worms map which is the most intensive map in the game I was gonna test the newer map known as the escapist or the volcano map but still worms pushes PCs to their limits so that's what I used for this test the APU scored 75 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 36 so it is well balanced we can say that much the upgraded setup, though, really doesn't reflect too much more on average. It only got 104.8 on average with a 1% low of 54.3. So that's another indication of where the CPU was holding back the graphics card at the same graphical preset. I imagine if you were able to push the GPU in its graphics settings up to maybe 1080p at high, maybe that might cut away some of the high CPU usage due to the fact you're pushing more resolution onto the GPU, not the CPU, maybe that could actually, you know, relieve some of the CPU usage and maybe you might be able to squeeze a little bit more frame rate out of it, but that could also go back to not enough of a CPU overclock, maybe you'd have to dial it in even more and then you might be able to unleash more potential out of this system. But as it sits, the way I have it done, I think it's pretty good, pretty usable, so we're going to move on. Now it's time for a result that genuinely impressed me, and that is A Hat in Time, a game that still runs on DirectX 9, 
but can still actually push computers very hard, especially on their CPUs, which is definitely the case for this game here. Although, I don't know, maybe it's more optimized for AMD than Intel, because I've had issues with Intel CPUs and CPU usage in the past more than I have this AMD system, so I don't know, maybe it's just a pure coincidence with testing, I couldn't tell you for sure. But either way, the APU had an impressive showing with the game set to 720p with everything dialed down as low as the game would let me go without, of course, turning off the precast shaders because the game will actually run with those and actually give you better performance, but I digress. Anyways, so, again, 720p resolution, all the in-game settings customized as low as they can go, the APU managed 41 frames per second on average across multiple different levels of the game, and yes, there are some heavy instances of stutter because of the low amount of RAM that it had during that time period. Again, 4 gigs of RAM, this game really does show CPU bottlenecks, as well as wanting to have more than 4 gigabytes of RAM for obvious reasons. The upgraded setup actually did very, very well. Same settings, too. It averaged 111 frames per second, basically, and the 1% low was about 32 and a half, so it still stutters, and that's just a hat in time in a nutshell because, you know, the optimization of the hat in time is not really all that great, which probably explains why it's only available on the Switch right now as far as consoles go because this is a very difficult game on the processors, and I can imagine that the current consoles, the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, might be, you know, able to struggle with this game and not really deliver the kind of results that I'm pretty sure the game developer would want. So maybe next gen with the PS5 and Xbox Series X, we could finally see this game come to consoles for the sake of comparison. But anyways, I digress. This game runs really well, and if you want to upgrade the graphics settings, 1080p is doable, and you can also change the preset over to, I believe it's a performance-oriented preset, not high performance, but like performance, or you could do something with a little more graphical fidelity and still keep the game within a reasonable frame rate that is within the tolerances of V-Sync. But do expect that the potential for stutter increases because of the uh, increased demand on the CPU, which in this case, again, doesn't exactly have the best scaling potential. But still very good results. Let's move on. And now we have Grand Theft Auto 4 The Complete Edition, which I did have a bit of an anomaly in testing, especially with the resolution. However, with the resolution change, I still did keep the settings the same to try and keep things as equal as possible. But, of course, you know, that's not always the case with my testing, because for some reason I just didn't have access to the same resolution with the upgraded setup as I did with the other one, so forgive me. But, the APU ran at 1366 by 768 with a mixture of settings, most of them being on the medium to low side of things, and it averaged about 31 frames per second. And, in typical GTA 4 fashion, it was definitely stutter-filled, but not to the same extent that you would expect. It wasn't really running out of RAM, per se, it was just the weakness of the CPU, because this is GTA 4 we're talking about here, it's not exactly the most optimized game in the world. You know, so for what it was, it wasn't too bad. Now, in the case of the upgraded setup, it ran at 1600 by 900 because, for some reason, again, I couldn't select 1366 by 768 I have no idea why. It must be something to do with the drivers or the monitor I was using at the time. But, even still, with the same settings, with the increased resolution and the overclock on the processor, it still managed a higher average of 84.5. So, not exactly an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, but still respectable nonetheless. But, as you can tell, based on the 1% and 0.1% lows, Ooh, that's some stutter, and yes, that is again on the CPU, but even still, you put V-Sync on, this game is still absolutely more than playable, but yeah, even you can see in the screen recording, it's definitely pushing that CPU to its limits, that's for sure, but when would GTA 4 not do that, I guess, is the real question, so anyways, moving on to the next title. And lastly, we have Distance, a game for which did not run well on the APU, much to my surprise. It got very close though, but I think it's got something to do with the graphics drivers. I was using the WHQL drivers, which were version 15.7.1, not the later Crimson 16.2.1 drivers, which I have used in the past before, and I never have had issues with the game crashing, but I did with this uh, driver this time. So, I guess, note to self, if you're going to use Distance on this APU's integrated graphics, do not use the WHQL drivers, use the later Crimson Beta drivers, because they apparently seem to be more stable with this game. Which, I guess in all fairness, that's probably a good thing, because the drivers 
are newer, but, you know, you run the risk of them being unstable and, you know, it constantly keeps asking you for beta driver updates that don't exist. Anyways, I digress. So, with this having been said, I wasn't able to get as far into the testing as I would have liked with the APU. I was only able to get to a certain spot, and then halfway through that level it crashed, and it was repeatable, so I don't know if it was just Windows or what. But with the testing I was able to do, it was averaging 28.2 frames per second with 720p resolution and most of all the in-game settings turned off or to their absolute lowest. With a 1% low of 9.6 because this game is really not particularly happy about running on 4 gigs of RAM. That's really the big thing. And of course the CPU gets heavily utilized in this game to you know do all the car physics and stuff as well as the flying. The upgraded setup definitely held up a heck of a lot better, and it scaled very, very nicely. With the same settings and all the good stuff, the average was well over 100 FPS, with a respectable set of 1% and 0.1% lows. Definitely, I think the overclock is what cleaned up the stutter massively. So, in addition to the RAM, definitely overclocking one of these old APUs makes a huge amount of sense if you want to just eat the last little bit of performance out of one of these old CPUs. So, I would say, yeah, Distance, if you want to run it with the upgraded setup like I did, absolutely this is playable. Or at least with the campaign, it's absolutely playable. I can't guarantee the workshop content because that can be a bit of a mess. I have seen some maps where it will absolutely bring even powerful computers to their knees with a lot of particle effects. That could be for some later testing if people are actually curious about the map that I would actually use for that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, you can expect Distance to run very well with this, with this machine, as long as you have the upgraded setup, not just the APU. At the end of the day, this is still a Socket FM1 computer. It's still got the same slow CPU cores that these would have came with when they were new back in 2011, as they do now. Well, especially they're slower these days compared to modern offerings. But it's actually surprising at how much a graphics card extra RAM, and a slight overclock to the processor will actually help revive a system such as this. It's actually, it actually really surprised me because I wasn't even expecting it to hold up as well as it did. But I guess to be fair, the graphics card is probably doing a lot of the brunt work. So yes, I apologize about some of the repetitiveness of the games that I test with these machines, but let me know in the future what you would like me to actually film regarding gaming with this machine or other machines. And I'll hopefully try to put the stuff into consideration, especially considering, you know, again, the larger titles like Red Dead Redemption 2, GTA 5, those sorts of things. But those actually take quite a while to install. So, you know, if you all are more interested in seeing those kinds of games mixed in with the other games or potentially a mix of the two, we'll have to see, you know, thumb up the video so I know, you know, maybe I could test some more large games with these systems if I can get them working. But, you know... If <coughs> But, you know, if you don't really care too much or whatever the case might be, you know, you don't really have to vote or you can still thumb up or whatever if you like the video regardless. But, you know, if you'd like me to, you know, maybe try doing the same things or maybe perhaps, you know, try different games or whatever, the, I don't know. Maybe you just generally dislike the video because I was gaming on AMD hardware. I don't know. Then you can use the thumb down button. And if you'd like to see more content just like this one come in the near future, of course, there'll be a red button down below that says subscribe. I would highly recommend that you click on it, as well as clicking the bell so you don't miss whenever I upload new videos. And with all that having been said, well, thank you all for watching. Catch you all in the next video.